Hello, welcome to GCSE Bite Size with me, Chris Smith, and with Kat Arney. We're from The Naked Scientists. Now, new humans, animals and plants don't just appear out of nowhere. They all need to reproduce. And in this podcast, we're going to find out how it all happens. But first, Kat, why is it that, sadly for some, we tend to look like our parents? Most people, animals and plants do look a lot like their parents because they share their genes. And this is the genetic information that tells us what we look like and makes us who we are. OK, so tell us a bit more about genes. What exactly are they? A gene is just the name of a section of DNA that tells your cells to make one particular protein. So one gene is the instructions for one protein. And in fact, to make a whole organism, you need lots and lots and lots of different genes with different functions. In fact, humans have around 30,000 genes and they all add up to make us unique. And Where can we find these genes? Genes are encoded by our DNA, and that's found packed up in the nucleus of cells in the form of chromosomes. Each chromosome contains thousands of genes. For example, our 30,000 genes are packed up in 23 matching pairs of chromosomes, while tiny little fruit flies have four pairs of chromosomes that carry around 13,600 genes. It's quite a lot. So if we share our parents' genes, how does this actually happen? Well, humans use sexual reproduction, which means that you need a man and a woman to make a baby, as we all know. And many other animals and plants also use this method too, but some do manage to go solo and reproduce asexually without the need for a partner. OK, so let's look at the sexual reproduction first. How does that work? To start with, you need gametes, and these are specialised sex cells. So in humans, we have male sex cells, which are the sperm, and in females, we have eggs or ova, and each contains half the number of chromosomes you need to make a new human one from each of those 23 pairs. And these are referred to as being haploid. So what happens when you actually make a baby? Well, when you make a baby, the egg and sperm fuse together at the moment of fertilisation. And this is the mixing of those two haploid sets of chromosomes to make a full or diploid set. And it also mixes together the characteristics from your mum and from your dad. So you end up with a blend of the two that makes you unique. So you might get your dad's nose shape or hair colour, but you might get your mum's eye colour. And what about the other sort that you mentioned, the asexual reproduction? Yes, this only needs one parent, and because there's no mixing of the genes, the offspring will be exactly the same as their parents, and we sometimes refer to them as clones. Sounds a bit sci-fi. Well, it does, but that's just a scientific word that simply means animals or plants that are genetically identical. So where do you see that kind of reproduction? A good place to start looking is the plant world. So, for example, potatoes lay down tubers, and these are underground storage organs that grow into a new crop of potatoes the following year. And daffodils lay down lateral buds in their bulbs, which grow up the following spring. Anything else? Well, some plants can make little side branches with tiny plantlets on them. And you can see this if you look at a busy lizzie or at a spider plant. And of course, strawberries produce runners, which creep along the ground, bearing new little plants. Are there any animals that behave in the same way? Well, it's certainly less common in animals than plants, but some do, such as sea anemones and starfish. So we've looked at how plants and animals usually reproduce themselves, and in part two we'll see how we can manipulate this using technology to produce clones, as well as finding out what genetic modification actually means.